what the catalog is and what Telelogic Enterprise catalog is in the next slide. So in this slide, we're tr trying to provide a high-level overview to give an understanding of the types of encyclopedias. So as mentioned in one of the initial slides, encyclopedias are actually databases on a data server. So when encyclopedias are shared among multiple users, access to the encyclopedia can be in controlled by an, an enterprise catalog. So this means catalog enterprises are termed enterprise. So catalog encyclopedias are termed enterprise. So within System Architect, we term catalog, catalog encyclopedias as enterprise and non-catalog encyclopedias as professional. So enterprise encyclopedias can be shared among all client types. You can have System Architect, System Architect XT, and System Architect Process Integrator clients accessing an enterprise encyclopedia. Professional encyclopedias may only be shared among System Architect clients. So in a System Architect XT deployment, you will always require an enterprise encyclopedia. So if you're configuring System Architect into an existing System Architect deployment, it's possible that the only type of encyclopedias available at the time are professional. So this will mean that you will be required to create and configure these new enterprise encyclopedias within your SAXT deployment environment. You might be lucky that the System Architect deployment environment is already using enterprise encyclopedias, which means you really don't need to do any additional configuration on the encyclopedias. So let's discuss a little bit further the catalog. The catalog manager utility, previously mentioned, is used to create the required enterprise catalog. So this catalog is used to sort of create this Telelogic enterprise um, catalog database. And that catalog database provides the authorization to the repositories or the databases on that sort of enterprise sort of data server. So the catalog sort of manager utility is used to create the enterprise catalog. And this is used to define the granular access to the required encyclopedias. So to create the catalog in a data server, additional access privileges may be required. So these privileges are detailed further in depth in the installation guide. It is common for a DBA, a database administrator, to restrict the required privileges required. So thus, to assist when a DBA um, restricts these additional requirements or only allows themselves to be able to create any of these, additional SQL scripts are provided as part of the SAXT installation and the System Architect installation. So these allow the DBA to create using their SQL scripts, which is their normal common environment, um, an enterprise catalog and encyclopedias. Or the alternative is for the DBA or whoever has administration of the database to allow a designated user specific permission to be able to run the catalog manager and create the catalog. So once the catalog is created, the special database called Telelogic Enterprise Catalog is created on the database server. So it's important to understand there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between a server and a catalog. So one catalog controls access to multiple encyclopedias. For this reason, when using a shared SQL Server deployment, it's recommended to use a separate designated instance for the Telelogic System Architect environment in encyclopedias. This is because the catalog is created in that specific instance to control access to all encyclopedias, just within that instance. So that's what we mean by a one-to-one. -one. So that's why if you have a shared data server, we say you should have a separate instance. Because if you don't have a separate instance for System Architect, the catalog gets created on your server, and it will affect all the databases on that server. So the System Architect catalog manner is, is the utility used to control and configure this enterprise catalog. So it's important to remember that in a System Architect XT deployment, the System Architect, System Architect XT, and System Architect Process Integrator clients may require different access privileges. That's why you need this granular sort of enterprise 
access role permissions. For example, a system architect XT client may only need read-only access, while a system architect process integrator client requires access to only business model diagrams. Well, then you have the system architect, which requires the full client access. So you can only provide this granular sort of role or object access using an enterprise encyclopedia, not a professional encyclopedia. Okay, so the next sort of area we'll look at is the system components and defined for the dependencies um, and the accounts required for system architect. So the system architect installation enables and configures Windows services and components that it needs to publish websites. The system components installed and required um, for an XT deployment are ASP.NET. So as System Architect is based on Microsoft's ASP.NET technology and it's part of the .NET framework, it requires these components installed on the server or the machine designated for System Architect XT. It requires it to support access to the website as it uses impersonation and ASP sort of um, components. You also need IIS, the Microsoft Internet Information Services. This allows the creation and configuring of a virtual folder, the published website um, that SAXT provides to the SAXT clients. You also need the JRE, Java Runtime Environment. This enables SVG graphic support um, for the configuration of the published website. You'll also have sort of directory security. So this enforces the security for the SAXT site through Windows Integrated Authentication, checking the identity credentials that users submit to access the secure website. So these are the main Windows components that will be required on the SAXT server. Um, another component, which we discussed just a little bit on a previous slide, that you'll need is an impersonation account. The impersonation account is basically a domain account designated to be used by System Architect, which is configured for the um, ASP. So for ease of deployment, it's recommended that this impersonation account is given local administrator privileges on the SAXT server. Now, if the account is not provided local administrator privileges on the server, it will just mean that you'll need to do additional post configuration to allow the system configurations, such as a COM and file folder access to this impersonation account. So that's if it's possible, we say, to ease your deployment and your post administration. Um, if this sort of designated domain impersonation account could also have local administration on um, the SAXT server, it just reduces the amount of post configuration that's done. So it's worth noting um, that the impersonation is independent of authentication mode. So the authentication element is used to de determine the user property of, say, an HTTP TTP connection. The impersonation is used to determine the Windows identity of the ASP.NET application being executed. So in our case, the SAXT sort of um, executable. Um, without impersonation, um, SAXT would not use the client identity to check authorization to the database encyclopedia. So as we discussed, that the client needs to sort of have the role access and the, auth the um, authorization to the encyclopedia, we need the impersonation to allow the client's identity to be passed through. So by default, the SAXT installation creates a local user account called SAXT Web User. So this account can be used, the impersonation account, if required. If it's given the domain privileges and any other sort of privileges required, it could be used. If you define your own account or you don't want to use this account, it can be um, deleted. So as we'll describe in more detail further, the impersonation account will require connection privileges to the server containing the encyclopedia. So the impersonation account will also need some additional privileges set up on the data server. A database account, so this could also be used. So a database account is used to access the database. So this is when the you need SQL authentication. So when you require a SQL authentication mechanism to your database server rather than the normal sort of Windows integrated authentication. So commonly your DBA must first create a valid SQL server login account and password. 
So this isn't related to your Windows you know, accounts. This is related specifically to access your SQL to the server or your database server. With this authentication mode, you need then to supply the SQL Server login and the password when you connect to the server. So for ease of deployment, we usually recommend that wherever possible, you use Windows authentication to your data server. So we